What do you get when you mix Nazi engineering, British engines, and Argentinian ambition? Possibly one of the most bizarre yet ingenious airliners ever made, the FMA IA 36 Condor. With five engines clustered in the rear under its turtle shell fuselage, this marvel could have stolen the crown as the first passenger jet aircraft, and with style too, flying 20% faster than even the De Helleven Comet. There's something quite bold and unusual about this design, including its deadly flaws, which is why I thought it deserved its own video here on Found and Explained. Let's discover more about Argentina's Condor. The FMA IA-36 Condor was to have been a commercial passenger jetliner, destined to be used for mid-range intracontinental flights by the likes of Argentina's national airline, Aerolíneas Argentinas. Its most striking feature was its multi-engine configuration. The Condor would house an annual inlet into which five engines or turbines would be fed. These engines would be Rolls-Royce centrifugal flow turbojets and would be placed in a wraparound conformation that would shroud the back end of the fuselage. The visual effect was a type of outer shell that was encased the entire back section of the plane. It literally did look like the plane was shedding a part of itself. Odd as it may look to us today, the plane's engine concept was actually very much in vogue at the time. The 1950s, literally the dawn of the commercial jet age, saw an advent of super large composite engines that were believed to have excellent reliability. The result would be a supreme, propulsive and aerodynamically efficient aircraft. Also, it's worth noting that the plan was to eventually replace the Condor's five turbojets with lighter, more powerful and fuel efficient engines. Very importantly, this jetliner was believed to be able to reach a speed of 950 kilometers or 590 miles per hour. That's impressive when compared to the Haviland Comet 3, the British commercial plane that came later in the 1950s and could only achieve a top speed of 780 kilometers or 484 miles per hour. That means that the Condor would have been almost 20% faster than the Comet 3 had it ever been mass produced. Getting to specifics, the aircraft would have had a wingspan of 34 meters or 111 feet with steeply angled arrow wings. This wing design was thought to enhance performance and economy whilst in flight at high speeds. The plane would have had an estimated range of 5,000 kilometers or 3,106 miles, making it perfect for flights between the Argentinian capital, Buenos Aires, and other regional destinations such as Lima in Peru and Sao Pablo in Brazil. Interior-wise, the plane would have had a single aisle configuration that would have only been able to take 32 to 40 passengers, which today for us with our super jumbo A380s is rather laughable, but it was considered back then ideal for flying between the countries in South America. We need to remember that international commercial aviation was still relatively in its pubescence back in 1950s. As such, the emphasis was more on having relatively small numbers of passengers fly in considerable relative comfort, even luxury, rather than the hundreds of people flying in much larger aircraft that is the norm today. The story of the Condor is intricately linked to the post-war history of Argentinian aviation. The country's air force began a rapid process of modernization in the aftermath of World War II, in great part thanks to the country securing the services of a number of now unemployed aerospace engineers and designers from Germany, Italy and France. The push was also helped by the provision of latest generation engines and other aircraft components courtesy of the British. By the late 1940s, the government of Argentina had made significant investments into research and development of aircraft technology. Within just a few years, Argentina was the sixth largest manufacturer of jet aircraft technology in the world. Today, the country doesn't even make it to the top 20. Work began on the Condor in late 1951, in the second largest city of the country, Cordoba. By 1953, a 134th scale wind tunnel model of the FMA Condor was built, as well as a full scale fuselage mock-up made of wood. 
But who was the designer and engineer behind this Condor project? As with so many aviation projects of the time, especially in Argentina, think Nazi Germany. The hero of our story in The Plane Designer was Kurt Tank. A, a, a tank, I mean tank. The same man who designed Nazi German era aircraft such as the Fokker Wolf 190, TA-152, among others. Yes, Tank was one of the many elite members of the Nazi regime who fled to Argentina in the aftermath of the Second World War. The German-born man was both a leading aircraft designer and a test pilot. He made the design director and head of flight testing for Focke-Wulf in Bremen, Germany. It was during his time at Focke-Wulf that he developed world-famous aircraft such as the FW-190, which was one of Nazi Germany's most important fighter aircraft during World War II, and which 20,000 were manufactured in different configurations. But unfortunately, that's not what our story is about today. So let's flash forward back to Argentina. Tonk created the Pukoi-1, also known as the Arrow-1, which would be South America's first jet-powered swept-wing aircraft. He then refined that design for the second edition before moving on to the Condor project in 1951. However, disaster would strike for Tonk, as he would be later accused by the new regime in power that he had a fake passport and was living there illegally. It turns out that the accusation was true, and this was due to Argentina's secret service hardly getting Tonk into the country after World War II in order to nab him before the Soviets did. Tank was duly deported from Argentina and then moved on to India. He would finally settle back into Germany in the late 1960s to become a consultant back at Missimich. Now called a different, longer name which I shudder to try and pronounce, although I think it's very poetic that he ended up right where he began. However, it's not fair to say that the Condor was not Tonk's most shining accomplishment. There are sound reasons to say that the El Condor had many problems. Those who have taken the time to analyze Tonk's design believe it was riddled with flaws from the outset. Two of these were quite obvious and included, first and foremost, an immense importance were the safety implications of having some passengers enveloped in a battery of engines. Secondly, how exactly far back did the passenger cabin go? It's very pertinent question given that one could deduce by the aircraft design that the section behind the intakes would have been very dark. Windows would have been useless in that area as it was entirely encased by the plane's wraparound engines. And that's just the beginning of the passenger experience. Imagine those passengers sitting right in the middle of what was effectively a ring of engines. The noise would have been deafening. Now add in the build-up of heat in that section of the aircraft, after all those same passengers would have been surrounded by super hot engines when in flight. So what would have they called that section that was definitely loud, hot and dark? Super economy perhaps? Talk about the flight from hell. The Condor design was undoubtedly problematic, so what happened to the project once headed by Kurt Tank. As with so many things in Argentina, it was a political upheaval that caused the Condor project to finally be cancelled. There was a coup d'etat in Argentina in 1958 that overthrew the government of Jean Domingo Perón in what would become known as the Revolution Libertadora. The government of the new installed dictator soon nixed any further development of Tank's brainchild. The Condor was no more. Nevertheless, if the project for the FMA IA-36 Condor had worked, Argentina would have been placed on the map for jet aviation, and they would have had something that they were very proud of. For one thing, it would have been the first jet airliner designed and built in Latin America. For another, it would have revolutionized engine design as we know it back in the 1950s. Could you imagine American Airlines flying the Condor with the Boeing 727 placed on the back seat? However, perhaps in the end, it was a good thing that this commercial jet with its wonky, even scary design concept was never mass produced. Speaking of mass produced, you've probably noticed how these videos are coming hard and fast, and you might be scared that you might miss an episode of Found and Explained. Well, fear not, just like the Condor, there is a way to save yourself by clicking that subscribe button. 
and never miss an episode. If you want to support the channel further, we have a Patreon and a channel membership program. If you sign up and join, you'll be able to see videos early, talk to me directly into the Discord, and pitch several ideas amongst other fans. So I can't wait to see you there, and thanks for watching today's video.